All right, this game is called Jumpy Monkey, and in Jumpy Monkey, your job is to launch your monkey and collecting the banana bananas by changing the angle that you launch. I'm doing that with the arrow keys right now. Boom, three launches on that one. And you can also adjust the launch speed. So let's go ahead and play around with this and see what you guys can do. All right, so go ahead in Scratch and create a new file. So create. Let's make sure we immediately rename it, something that makes sense. So please put your last name. So your last name, not mine. Okay. And then monkey, jumpy monkey. The game is called Jumpy Monkey. So uh, I'm just going to do JM, but put something that makes sense for you. All right. We're not going to need the cat sprite. Uh, so you can delete the cat sprite. And we're going to add two sprites right off the bat. So we're going to click the magnifying glass and we're going to choose the monkey. Here's the monkey right there. And we're also going to search for one called arrow right here. So we've got these two. Now I want you to immediately rename arrow to launcher because we're going to refer to that to the launcher throughout this tutorial. Okay, first thing we need to do is go ahead and make a variable. So go to your variables category and we're going to make a variable called launch speed. Make sure it's for all sprites and click OK. And this one is going to be visible. We're going to keep it visible for the game. The players are going to want to be able to see how they're adjusting the launch speed. All right, so in the launcher sprite, make sure you're in the launcher sprite. Let's go ahead and start to add some code to control the launcher. So bring out a when green flag is clicked. Go to our variables menu and we're going to set launch speed to 10. So when the game starts, the counter will be at 10. Uh, we're going to make sure that we have the launcher in the correct place on the screen. So we're going to bring out a go to X, Y block and we want it in the lower left. So those are both going to be negative numbers. So negative 200 on the X and negative 140 on the Y should put it in just about the right spot. If I hit the green flag now, you can see the launcher down here in the lower left corner. Uh, we want the launcher to kind of point in uh, kind of up to the right. So we're going to do a 45 degree angle so point in direction 45 degrees and we want to make sure that it doesn't get covered up at any point so we're going to find that go to front layer piece of code and put that right in there okay now uh, let's go ahead and add a little bit more code to control the launcher so let's bring out another when green flag clicked and then grab a forever loop and inside this forever loop, we're going to put two if then uh, pieces of code. Don't put them inside each other at the start. We're actually going to end up putting two more, one each in these right here. So we want to, uh, in this one, put in a if right arrow and if left arrow press. So what we want to do for that is go to our sensing and we want to do a if right arrow pressed. So I'm bringing out this key space press but then we're going to change that. Uh, we're going to change that to the right arrow and the left arrow. Okay. So what we want to do is say if right arrow pressed we want the uh, arrow to turn one direction so we're going to go to motion and we're going to say turn one degree and then left arrow we're going to say turn the opposite direction so no, pay attention to the fact that the right arrow the arrow is turning clockwise the left arrow it's turning counterclockwise okay I said we were going to put more if thens in here but that was wrong that was from a previous uh, lesson so you can see now that when we click the green flag, the arrow is kind of pointing at that 45 degree angle and I'm holding down my right and left arrow key and you can see how the arrow is turning like that. Okay. All right. But now what we want to do is we want to be able to control the launch speed. So this is controlling the launch angle. So we're going to do this just a little bit differently. So we're going to bring out these when certain keys are pressed here. So for these, we're going to do the up and the down arrow. So when up arrow is pressed, and when down arrow is pressed and the code is going to be pretty similar for both of them uh, but we just changed some values so we need another if then so when the up arrow is pressed uh, what we want to do is the launch speed to go up but we don't want it to go over a certain value so we're going to uh, 
go into sensing again. Oh no, I'm sorry, we need an operator, excuse me. So get the less than operator. So in the operator area, the middle one right here. Okay, we're gonna make this value 20 instead of 50. And then we're gonna to go to variables and we're gonna bring launch speed in there. So this says if launch speed is less than 20, then we're going to change launch speed by 0 0.1. So this is saying, as long as the launch speed's not over 20, when I press the up arrow, you can increase the launch speed. But once it gets to 20, that would be the maximum speed. Okay, we're gonna do something similar now for down arrow. So we need another if then. And again, we need an operator if launch speed in this case is greater. So that of these three bunched here in the middle, we're doing the greater than. Be very careful that you're picking the correct ones here. Uh, so this one we're gonna say if launch speed is greater than one, so I'm changing the 50 to one, I'm going back to variables. And again, putting launch speed in here. And then we're gonna bring out change launch speed by negative 0.1 this time. Okay, and if I hit the green arrow, uh, if I hit the up arrow, you can see how the launch speed in the upper left is changing, down arrow. You can see how it's going up and down right there. Okay, so we've got our uh, launch angle and our launch speed picker checked. So let's go ahead now and start teaching the monkey how it should behave. All right, so click on the monkey sprite. The monkey is way too big for this game, so let's go ahead and start to uh, change some of that. So go ahead and bring out a when green flag is clicked again. Under looks, we're gonna set the size to 35%. We're gonna set the rotation style in the motion menu. We don't want the, uh, we do not want the monkey to rotate. So we're gonna set rotation style, bring that out, and we're gonna say don't rotate. And then finally, we want uh, at the beginning, when we click the green flag, we want the monkey to be on the launcher. So we're gonna find the go to, this go to random position, and we're gonna change that to go to launcher. So again, when we click this, the monkey now will be on the launcher, ready to go, ready to be launched into the air. Okay, but what do we want the monkey to do? We, well, when we click the launcher, we want the monkey to to go flying around the screen and eventually it's gonna to try to collect some things. We're gonna to try to make it challenging but fun. All right, so bring out under the events area when space key pressed. We want the monkey to always go back to the launcher when we do that. So again, bring out another go to block and change it to launcher. We're gonna point in the direction. We're gonna bring that out and what we need to do for this one, what we need to do for this one is in the sensing area, you're gonna to have to scroll down a little bit, but you're looking for this, this one right here that probably should say backdrop of stage, but we're gonna change stage to launcher, and then we're gonna change uh, in the choices that become part of the launcher one, we're gonna do direction of launcher, and we're gonna put that in to the value there for point in direction. Okay, then what we wanna do is we're going to bring out a new block that we have not yet used. We're looking for repeat until. We're gonna snap that on there and we are going to again go to sensing and then the touching one. So click that and change that to edge. So repeat until touching the edge, so meaning the edge of the screen. And we're gonna grab a move block but we don't wanna put a specific value in here. We want the speed that the monkey moves to be dependent on the value in the launch speed. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna put that variable in there and we're gonna say move launch speed steps. So this means that the launch speed is set to one, it's gonna move one step if it's, uh, until it touches the edge of the screen. If, if it's set to 20, it's gonna move 20. So the monkey will move faster depending on the launch speed. So for example, if I turn this down to one, and press the space bar, you can see how fast the monkey moves. And if I turn it up to 20, or close to it, you can see how much faster the monkey moves. Now, obviously the monkey is uh, just going in a straight line. We're going to uh, fix all of that stuff as part of what we do next. We're gonna simulate gravity basically right now. 
Okay. All right. So now we need to give the monkey something to do. So we're going to go ahead and first we're going to make a variable and we're going to call the variable num bananas. So number of bananas because we're going to allow a certain number of bananas to come out of the screen and it's something you might decide to change later. So we're going to make a new sprite, pick the magnifying glass and banana should be pretty close to the front, but start to type it in if you need to. Uh, we'll bring the bananas out and let's go ahead and add some code to the bananas here so uh, we can explain what we want them to do during the game. So we're going to bring out a green flag. Now we're going to be creating clones of the bananas here because you're going to see that we're going to be able to have multiple bananas appear on the, on the screen. We don't need to make a sprite for each one on the screen. We're going to let the we're going to teach this sprite to make clones of itself so we can have as many as we want to appear on the screen. Okay. All right. So when the green flag is clicked, we don't actually want this banana to appear. We want clones of it to appear. So we're actually going to hide it. So whenever we click the green flag, we're going to hide the banana. Go to the variables area and set, bring out a set and change that to number of bananas. And we're going to start with three, which is something you can change later when you make some of your changes yourself. And then we need a repeat event. Or I'm sorry, repeat control. So bring out a repeat. And then, but instead of 10, what we're going to do is put the banana numbers variable in there, which is set to three. And we're saying create this many clones of myself. So if you're going to go to events, or I'm sorry, it's in control. I keep going to the wrong one. Create clone of myself. So this little piece of code says basically put three copies of me on the screen. If this number was changed to nine, it would it would do nine. That's what the repeat number of bananas is. So this is saying we set bananas to three. So this is basically saying repeat this three times, create a clone of myself. So basically it's going to create uh, three clones of the banana on the screen. But what we want to do is kind of appear in a random area of the screen. Uh, but not just anywhere on the screen and you'll see why here in just a second. All right, so now what we need to do is bring out a when I start as a clone block, which is in the control area. So this is saying any clone that starts uh, from the banana should behave this way. So we're going to have it uh, go to, so find a go to XY block and bring that out. And we're going to bring out a bunch of pick random blocks here pretty soon. So go to your operators and put one pick random block for the X and one for the Y. The values for the X, we're going to do 0 to 200 on the X. So that's right to left. And again, 0 is the center of the screen. So we're basically saying anywhere from the center of the screen all the way to the right edge of the screen for the most part. Pretty close to that. And then for the Y, we're going to do negative 140 to 140. Oh, I did 14. So let me make sure I get negative 140 to positive 140. Okay, so basically, uh, as we know, the Y is up and down. So basically, we're saying appear in the right half of the screen, basically almost anywhere from the top to the bottom of the screen, just about. All right, for size, we're going to want them to be uh, slightly different sizes. Change that a little bit. So find the set size two, bring that out. And again, we're going to do a pick random block. So the game will be a little bit more interesting if the bananas vary in size a little bit. So we're going to do 50 to 100%. So either full size or about all the way down to half size. And let's uh, let's have them appear a little bit differently as far as colors go. So find the uh, set color effect block. And again, there's certain things you can change, but we're going to want it to be on color. And we're going to again going to do a pick random on this. And we're going to set this to negative 10 to 20 and then we want them to show because they'll be hidden until since the banana is hidden the clones would be hidden as well so we need to tell them to show then we need a another block but basically what we want now is uh, we want the bananas to be on the screen until they touch the monkey so we're going to bring out a wait until block in the control area and then we're going to sensing and the very top block is touching and we're going to say touching monkey wait until touching monkey so once they are touching the monkey we're going to go ahead and say uh, we're going to we need to do a couple of things we want it to disappear and change the count of the bananas on the screen so we're going to do change number of bananas 
num bananas by negative one. So when we hit a clone, we should subtract one from the screen. And then finally, we need an if then to let the game know what we want to happen if all of the bananas are gone. So we want to bring out if then. So if if number of bananas equals zero. So we need an operator. So find the equal sign, put that there. It's going to say 50, but we're going to change that to zero. So the variable we need is the number of bananas. So if the number of bananas equals zero, we want to say the game is over. So we're going to find that broadcast message. Make sure you don't do broadcast and wait, just broadcast. And we're going to do a new message and we're going to call it game over. And then last but not least, we are going to, uh, we need to put a delete this clone at the end to make sure that the screen is clear. Okay, so if we go ahead and run this now, you'll notice that we can get all the bananas. The game should be over. Nothing's happening because we haven't yet told the game what to do when the game is over. So that will be coming shortly. But again, you should see now that it's pretty easy to hit these bananas. So let's make it a little bit more challenging. But you should also notice that they're appearing with slightly different colors slightly different sizes, that sort of stuff. So let's make the game a little bit more interesting. We're going to make a new sprite. And I'll be honest with you, uh, Scratch doesn't have a good palm tree as a choice anymore. So and the trees they have are actually, I don't really like them, to be honest with you. Uh, so these are the two choices for trees. I'm just going to go with this one. I encourage you to draw your own palm tree. You go into the costume editor. Okay. You go in here. Take your paintbrush, try to draw something that might be a little bit more interesting. But for now, for the purposes of this, uh, I'm just going to go ahead and use the tree that we have here. So put the tree kind of in the middle of the screen. You're going to have to play around with this a little bit. If the tree is too big or too high or too close, then you'll have trouble with the game. So kind of the middle of the screen should be good. But again, you'll, you'll play around with it uh, to get it where you want it. All right, so now what we want to do is go back to the monkey and we want to say... Uh, we have the monkey stopping when the monkey touches the edge of the screen. We also want uh, the monkey to stop when touching the tree. So we have this repeat until touching edge. Uh, we're going to pull that out. And then in the operators, we are looking for the or block. So blank or blank. We're going to put touching edge back in there. But then we're going to go back into sensing and put another touching block and we're going to say till touching tree. Okay, and if we test this now, when the monkey touches the tree, okay, it stops. So that's like a bad thing to happen in the game. But at the moment, the monkey's not traveling very interestingly because it's just going in a straight line. So there's no way, for example, to get any of these bananas that are behind the tree right now. So we got to add gravity. We've got to have the monkey sort of simulate what would happen in real life if you threw a monkey in the air, it's going to start to fall down because of gravity. So in order to do that, we're going to need to make a couple more variables. So let's make two of them. So we're going to call these variables false speed. And one more, make a variable. We're going to call it gravity. Okay. All right. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go back to the monkey code and we can just put it right in this little bit of code that we have right here. We are going to put a set gravity to negative 0 0.2. Negative 0 0.2. Another thing we want to do now, notice we've been adding these uh, variables and they're all appearing on the screen. We only need launch speed on the screen for now. So you can uncheck those and just leave launch speed checked. Launch speed needs to be seen by the user so they know how they're setting their launch speed. So that one needs to be checked. Okay. All right. So now we have uh, in the monkey code, we're going to add now a way to have the monkey start to fall like towards the ground based on the speed that the monkey and the launch angle uh, of the monkey. So what we're going to do here is we're going to add a couple of pieces of code. So in motion, find the change Y block and put that under 
in the repeat until under the launch speed here. So we're gonna change Y by fall speed. So go to variables and put fall speed there. And then we're going to add another one and we're gonna do a So we have to go to our variables area and grab the change block and put it under change y by fall speed. This should say change fall speed by gravity. What this is going to do, it's going to allow the monkey to be affected by gravity. So notice now when I launch the monkey in the air. Oh, and something is acting a little strange. Let me do this again. All right, I made uh, a little bit of a mistake. Uh, I had to stop the video because the game was not behaving the way that I wanted it to. And yours probably is not either because when I am pressing the space bar, the monkey is not flying across the screen. It's dropping right to the bottom. And I had to troubleshoot and I realized the mistake I made. I just missed a quick instruction. One thing I did not do is I didn't set the, the uh, fall speed to anything in the game. So I've made a variable called fall speed, but I didn't define what I want fall speed to start the game at like I did for gravity here. So we need to do that. So let's put set fall speed. We're going to put it in the when space key press so that every time we press the space key, fall speed is set to zero. That should fix the issue that we were having. If I press the green flag now and press my launcher, as we can see, Everything is behaving correctly now. So again, you got to be careful with your code. Uh, little mistakes lead to problems. So I apologize for what was going on right there. All right, but that's good, good to learn. Even, uh, even I have issues with certain stuff. All right, so good. So now we are, we have the monkey behaving the way we want. We can uh, move our launcher and our launch speed around to try to get all the bananas. And I just got all the bananas. And so now we need to uh, tell the game what we want to do when the game is over, when we've gotten all the bananas. So what we're going to do right now is we're going to make a new sprite with the paintbrush. I'm going to do something very quickly here. I want you to notice I am on the vector area. This will be easier here. So if it says convert to bitmap, that's what you want. I'm just going to go ahead and draw a circle. That's actually not going to be a circle. It's going to be more of an oval. I'm going to do yellow with kind of a red outline. You can do whatever you want. And I'm just going to kind of draw an oval, something like this right here. And then I'm going to make sure it's in the center. And I'm just going to put some text. Uh, make sure when you go to type in text that you change the color, because if it was the same yellow, uh, you'd have an issue. So I'm just going to put in good job. I'm going to click away from it, and then I can make that a little bit larger so it fits where I want it to. And then you want to put in two more pieces of text. Uh, you want it to say, uh, you used or you it took or something like that. And then another text with the word launches. And what we're going to do is we're actually going to have something appear. We're going to have a variable automatically appear right here saying how many launches it took for the for the player to collect all of the bananas. OK, uh, but you can play around with making that look the way that you want. But let's go to the code that we need right now for this. So we need to add a when green flags clicked. Uh, oh, we need to make a variable. Uh, let's make another variable. We're going to call it launches. And click OK. I'm actually going to capitalize that. And we're going to want to, when launches appears here, don't uncheck it. We do want it to appear here, but we're going to hide it. But we want it to be the large readout. We want it to look like this. Okay. All right. So now going back to the sprite one, let, oh, let's, let's name this. Let's name this like good job or you win or something like that. For this sprite okay so when we click the green flag we want to again set our variable so we're going to set launches to zero so every time we start a new game 
we'll have the launches set to zero. We are going to use this hide variable launches because we don't want to see the zero until we want it to appear. And then we're just going to put a hide block at the bottom of this right here. So when we click the green flag, notice that little launch has gone away. Okay, we're going to add some more code here. So we are going to go to when I receive game over. If you remember earlier, we, we broadcast game over when all of the uh, bananas are gone. We're going to do the go to XY, zero, zero. We are, want to make sure this comes to the front. So under looks, we want to go to front layer. Now we want to show it because we, we did have it hidden before. Then we want to go to our variables and go to the show variable launches. And then we want to stop all other sprites uh, in the game. So that's in the control area. Stop all sprites. And then we need to add one more thing. We're going to add a when space pressed. We want to keep track of how many launches it took. So we're going to say change launches by one. So every time we launch, we'll see what happens. Go ahead and run the code now. And uh, you'll notice there that that game would have been unwinnable because the bananas were in the tree. Like I can't get this banana that's down here at the bottom right now. So I'm going to press the green flag again. So this is why you're going to have to play around a little bit with your boom. Okay. You have to play around a little bit with your, um, your tree size. So now what we want to do is we want to grab, once this screen appears, we want it to be a large readout. We want to grab it and put it in a place, I don't, know what, I don't know why that keeps popping up, right there like that. So now this will automatically appear here. Okay, just a couple more things. We're just about done. Let's make this a little bit more interesting by adding a backdrop. This is another thing where I don't really feel like there's a great backdrop for this game. You could make your own. You can go into the costume editor and draw your own things in there. I think that'd be pretty cool, but I'm just going to put this backdrop in right here, but you can put whatever you would like. And then we just got to add a couple of sounds to this. So let's go into the monkey. And let's go into sound and uh, go, go to the sounds tab. And then we're going to choose a sound. We're going to choose boing. And there's a few different ones, B-O-I-N-G. You pick the one that you like. I'm going to do drum boing. And then in the code for the monkey, I'm going to go ahead and bring out a place, play drum boing until done. And I'm going to go ahead and put that in the... Uh, where do I want to put that? I want to put that in the, I'm going to put it right here in the when space key pressed. Anywhere in here will be just fine. Okay, and then finally, uh, for banana, we're going to add a chomp sound. So go to bananas, click on the sound tab. Uh, chomp is already here, but if it wasn't, you would just search for it and click it to load it. And then in the code area, you can bring out the play sound chomp too. And then what you want to do is this one needs to be in the uh, wait until touching monkey area. So anywhere after wait until touching monkey, do that. All right, let's see what this looks like now. Again, you can see here that the bananas are, are appearing in a place they shouldn't be. There we go. All right, so I'm going to stop the video here. You can play around with cleaning this up, and then in Google Classroom, it's going to tell you exactly the type of changes I want you to make to this project.